oh, I give up. This video is just not gone to plan for me, do you know that? Right, so I'm currently at um, our shop at Poplar's Garden Centre and I'm just with Leon, he's just gone inside somewhere, I don't know, he's over there somewhere. In the 340i, he's actually been daily driving this car, it's a serious car, he loves it. So it's obviously it's an auto, it's kind of like a chilled car but it's got loads of power so it's pretty, pretty good all rounder. But we're going to pick up, uh, you've seen it in the thumbnail, anyway, an Audi S1 from another car trader that we deal with and I thought, do you know what, I've never driven one before and I've certainly never had one on my channel, so it's a perfect opportunity for me to get an S1 on my channel. So I've got no clue what they're going to be like, but I was at the car uh, at the Shrinebrook the other day, and one of the lads that come on the convoy with us has got an S1, and I was having a good look at it, and I think they're absolutely sick cars. So I'm well curious to see what they're like. So um, we'll get on with the intro, and after the intro, we'll be in the S1. All right. As ever, I am in a massive rush. Is that all right? That's all right, isn't it? I'm in shot. Um, but I think it's got a dash cam beyond there, hasn't it? Um, yeah, I was in a massive, massive rush. That's not what I was going to say. Um, I am in a rush. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I am in a rush, but um, I'm in a rush to go and look at a car, funny enough. Let me just hit the road and then I'll begin talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> It'll all make sense when, we, when I explain. Right, that's filming. Let's go. I hate being late to anywhere, right? And I'm on my way today to go and look at a car. Should I tell you what car it is? I think it's fine for me to tell you what car it is. It's a C63 AMG, which is a car that I want potentially for myself. So of the three cars that I want for myself in a minute, the, the main four choices I would say actually are um, C63 AMG, Audi RS3, BMW M3, or Alfa Romeo, Julia Quadrifoglio, yeah? And temporary lights. And today I'm going to look at a C63, so it's a big day for me, and I've been, I've been well excited about seeing one of these cars, driving it, and uh, I'm meeting the guy that's selling the car at 12 o'clock, it's actually a guy that follows me on YouTube, and um, as I was about to head off, I got a call from one of our guys at Bing Car to say that, um, the Audi S1 that we've got advertised has got someone who wants to come look at it. Um, can you bring it over? So I'm like, mm, I'm already in a rush to get to this place. And I don't like messing people around. But I thought, I really want to go and pick that car up because I've never driven one before and it's a car that pops up in conversation a lot. So right now I'm in the drive seat, I'm filming. And I thought, do you know what? If I'm picking this car up, I am getting my cameras and I'm doing a video on it because there's no way am I driving an Audi S1 for the first time ever and not filming it. So uh, here I am, I'm late. I've just texted a guy that I'm gonna be going to see to say that I am running late and Steve, Steve, if you've watched this video, you'll now understand why I was late today to come see your car. Uh, but for me, like I say, I hate being late to people, to meetings or whatever, but it's, it had to be done. So. I I am very, my knowledge is very brief on this car, all right? I don't know loads about them, but like I said as well earlier, I have, I, I was at um, the Shambrook recently, and one of the lads that come along to the convoy that I'd organized at the last minute, great turnout by the way, so thanks to everyone who turned up to that, because it was a bloody good convoy. And, uh, but that aside, one of the lads had an Audi S1, yeah? And 
I had a proper good look at it and I was like, do you know what, this car is actually a serious little car. He had some different seats which were, are apparently an optional extra. They're called super sport seats. And they've got like plastic backs on them. And again, forgive me for being so like clueless about these cars. I, I did look at this car at the weekend with like no knowledge and I was just like shocked how cool this car was. And then when I got the call today to say, look, we need to go and drive, uh, I need to go and pick this one up, I thought, this is now my priority. Now, first impressions of the S1 is, it's a bloody good looking car. Outside, we've got these big wheels. Again, I don't know much about the options. I'm sorry about that, but the wheels look bloody good. They look like sort of black edition wheels that you see on a lot of uh, other Audis. I had an RS5, RS5 a few years ago and um, they had similar sort of style looking, similar looking wheels on them and they do look bloody good. So visually it does look good. This is a five door option and apparently according to having a little read this morning about these cars, the five door is 0 0.1 second, 0 0.1 of a second slower to 60 than the three door. So I'm guessing by throwing that extra door in it might add a bit of weight. Uh, who knows but they are 1350 kilos so you kind of compare compare it or in my head I compared it to a Civic Type R again apparently they only come in manuals which is uh, quite an odd thing really they'd be really cool with a, a DSG gearbox or an S-Tronic should I say um, but blimey look that's fourth gear nice nice power delivery um, but yeah, comparing it to a Lycos, I don't know why a Civic Type R just sprung to mind, but it's a, a, a manual sort of sporty car with similar power. This has got 225 bhp and, or there or thereabouts anyway. And um, like I say, it's a manual gearbox and it weighs a little bit more than a Type R. I think Type R's are about 1250 kilos and this is 1350. So it's not super lightweight considering the size of the car. So straight away, I put my foot down there. I wonder if we've got any sports drive modes. We've got a drive select button down here. Let's press that, see what happens. So in front of me, I've got like a little LCD display. And when you press the drive select button down here, different things happen on this screen. Now, um, I've gone straight into dynamic mode and I've noticed throttle response is a bit sharper. And the turbo is so strong with it. Uh, and it roars, it bloody roars. It is a two litre turbo. Again, if I'm honest, I didn't bloody know that. I thought they were a 1.6 turbo. I can't believe that this little car has got a two litre turbo engine in it. It is a Quattro as well, so it's four wheel drive. And it's just a tiny little car with a big, I know two litre is not a massive engine, but for this size of car, that's a big engine. So it's a car that's quite, it's quite a serious car, isn't it? Now, annoyingly, <laughs> in front of me, I've got a, an old Rover, uh, but there it is, a 50 mile an hour road, so I can't do too much anyway, but it is impressive how it delivers power. So I'm dropping it to third, foot down. It's, it's quick, yeah? Now the reason why I wanted to get this car on my channel, which is just as important as it being the first time that I drive this car, is it's a car that a lot of people that watch my channel will definitely be interested in. I I was sort of laying in bed last night looking at Audi RS3s and the whole S and RS thing, it, it's a big scene, isn't it? People love these types of cars and I don't think there is no such thing currently as an Audi RS1. So this is like the top of the range, small Audi, yeah? I need to get in front of this bloody Rover. Feel the power. I want to feel the power. Uh, let me just drop it down, slow right down, and then we'll have a little, we'll have a little squeeze. Yeah, we'll have a little play with the throttle. So it is a traction control off, four wheel drive. So you don't think it's got launch control, but on launch, it's going to give a lot of traction. Yeah, ready. Three, two, one. Let's see what it does. Sixty in. Go. Sixty. I do really need to get a draggy box. I've actually got a draggy box. I was laying in bed thinking about that last night as well. 
Uh, draggy boxes are very important, they give it ac accurate times and I will begin to use one but it is unbelievable how quick this car is. Now one thing I did think when one thing I did think when I discovered that this car had like sort of 220-230 bhp is when I was younger, I'll say younger, 10 years ago maybe, I had an Audi S3, yeah? And it was an O2 plate car in Nagaro blue. What a lovely colour that is, Nagaro blue, yeah? Traditional or traditional or notorious or legendary Audi S and RS colour. Love that colour and I absolutely love that car. But that was an S3, yeah? Which was, at the time, Audi's small sports hatch, if you like. Sort of comparable to this, but it is an A3, so it's a bigger car. And But anyway, forget about that. That had the same BHP as this car did from factory. And I thought, wow, that car was like, back then for its time, was a seriously quick car. And this is just an A1. That's what I thought. This is an A1 with the same power as my old S3, which I think is quite serious. Now, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what insurance is gonna be like for this type of car, for the type of person who's gonna to wanna to drive it, probably quite expensive but I do also think that the type of person that does buy this car would generally be someone who can afford costly running costs of this car because they're not cheap cars to buy if you're committing to buying one of these cars then the chances are you're probably someone who has quite a a wealthy pocket should we say and you know what you're committing to you know what you're letting yourself in for because like I say, they are a big engine. Fuel economy is not going to be great. In fact, the lad, I say the lad, I keep thinking, I don't know what, I think, I'm guessing his name's Alex. I'm sorry, Alex, if you're watching this, uh, but you keep springing to mind because obviously I was with you at the Shrine the other day. But uh, Alex, let's assume the lad's name's Alex, who I spoke to the other day with the S1. He said that he gets terrible economy out of his car. Uh, generally, it's about 20 miles to a gallon, which for a tiny little car, isn't that great. Also, touching on the price of these cars, this car is about, I think, up for sale for about £13,000. Again, that's not a cheap car compared to a lot of other types of cars, like you can get a, a Golf R nowadays for that kind of money. So, there, it's a hell of a commitment buying an S1, but they are a seriously special car. On the outside, you've got like silver mirrors, you've got a black roof, you've got four exhausts out the back, so, it is a car with a hell of a lot of character. The seats have got the S1 stamped in the back of them. So, um, all in all, it's a serious little car. Now, annoyingly, I do feel like I want to cane the arse out of it, if I'm honest, just before I drop it off, but I can't because surely this car has been remapped. It's proper quick. Because, yeah, there's a Rover in front of me and road works everywhere and stuff. Honestly, the way it just, this is quick. Oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> Sounds bloody good. Now I'm sure that this car has been remapped. There was a brief mention of a tuning box, but I don't know if that's still on the car. It, it's too quick. This car, this car is a, a hell of a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. And it's definitely making me question if this is a stock car because I can't believe how low end the power is. It's just so talking. When you put the like, second gear there, what is that all about? Oh no, not another slow car, please. Please. Yeah, and generally, well, like when you get a car remapped, it does really increase the low end torque, doesn't it? Like normally, you wouldn't be bothered if you got stuck behind a Golf GTI, but it just seems like out in all these little villages now, you get stuck behind the any car, no matter if it's a bloody performance car, and they all just drive like silly billies. This has been an extremely unplanned video and I am sorry about that. Generally, a lot of my videos are like that. I'm just rushed 
unplanned and I do everything last minute but what I might have to do right now is just click my fingers and get past this golf. I don't know what he's doing, he's just not in a rush, pain. But but generally also when I do a video I get seem to get stuck behind slow drivers. I do want to show you what this car performs like. But I'm struggling today. I've got a bit of open road. With a van in front of me again. Just quickly, this has sort of been slotted in somewhere in the middle of the video. The way this car tears, it just, tears is a word that I am gonna use because it just feels like it's bloody tearing up the road. For such a small sort of car that you just wouldn't expect it from, it is shocking. Watch this. <laughs> but um, Audi S1, what are my first impressions of it? Let's summarize this video. My first impressions of an Audi S1 are, they look amazing, yeah? They've got a hell of a lot of character. Like I said, the black roof, the four exhausts, the nice wheels, uh, the fact that they come in a five door. A little bit annoying they don't come with an electronic gearbox because that would be amazing. Imagine sort of flicking through that gear now. And, oh, that would be unreal. This car does feel like it's been tuned. I don't know that, but I will, at the end of this video, let you know if it has or not. I'll give you an up or a down to let you know, a thumbs up or a down even, I mean, uh, to let you know if it's been tuned and or, uh, or if this tuning box that I mentioned does exist. I think one thing I will say about Audi S1s is they are a lot of money, you know? They're not a cheap car to own. Now, I'm curious to see what you lot think. If there's anyone out there looked at S1s and thought, I want to buy that car, and then gone off and bought something else because they've found that something else is slightly better value for money. Uh, this has got like DAB radio, it's got heated seats. It does offer a hell of a lot, but for a sort of a small car, which generally you sort of think of as a, a thing that's affordable to buy, they're a large amount of money. Even the Audi A1s, they're not, they're not too cheap to buy, but they are a bloody good quality car. So yeah, I'm curious to see what people think. So let me know in the comments. Like I say, it's a um, bit of a rush video, very uh, broad or brief information on it. I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm the um, most knowledgeable guy in the world on Audi S1s, but I've got to say that the, the overall drive of it has massively impressed me. Can't believe how enjoyable it is to drive. And annoyingly, again, I just got rid of the slow GTI and I've now got a slow Vauxhall combo van in front of me. I'm gonna end it here because I've crammed in what I can and uh, I'm nearly at Binker now. But uh, if this car is still available by the time this video goes live, I'll make sure there's a link for it in the description below. I'm now going to look at a C63S Edition 1 series car. I'll be letting you know what my thoughts are on that. I don't know if I'm gonna be filming it because, I don't know, I don't know, but I'll let you know. Um, if this car has been tuned, I'll let you know now. Uh, there you go. And um, thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, hit like. If you're new, hit subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode of Diary of a Car Trader, right? Bye. In the next episode of Diary of a Car Trader, I buy a 1.4 Volkswagen Golf R-Line.